Another energy converter that uh, is getting more and more attention is a conversion of wind energy or fluid energy into electrical energy. Not just wind energy, uh, they're tidal energy, so we're looking at, at water as well. So converting fluid power into electrical power is a big deal right now. So let's check it out. Now, I want to derive the formula for fluid power, and I want to start with something you know. So keep in mind that each of these steps um, you've probably worked with before. It's just a combination of maybe uh, quite a bit, but fluid power. Now fluid power is, is motion, it's energy, right? It's electrical energy. So it's electrical energy, or excuse me, it's kinetic energy over time, energy of motion, which is one half mass times velocity squared. And I'll just put the time, you know, time on the bottom here and put it over here. Now, mass is mass density times volume, because when we're talking about a fluid, we don't usually, it's hard to measure the mass. Uh, but, well, for example, if I want, like, three ounces of water, it's just hard to hold it still. So we usually talk about the density of the water, or any fluid, and the volume we have. So mass is mass density times volume, easier to measure. And that gives us one half times mass density times volume over time. I'm just going to stick the time there so it's easier to see what I do next. Times velocity squared. So all I've done is I've taken mass and converted it to mass density times volume. Now volume over time, that's, that's volume flow rate. So I can rewrite this as one half times the mass density times the volume flow rate times the velocity squared. Okay, if you can get the volume flow rate, you're set. And there are measurements that will directly measure the volume flow rate. But if you're talking about a wind turbine, you want to know how much, how much is hitting, uh, how much air is hitting uh, the turbine blades. And so you're interested in the area of the blades. So now you use this equation. Volume flow rate is velocity times area, right? It's volume over time, but it can also be velocity times area. This is from, uh, I think, the first two lectures of Physics 2. So that would make this 1 half mass density, I'll say A times V instead of V times A, so put the A here, the area, and then it's V squared times this V, that's V cubed. Now it's in terms of things we know, I can get the density of the fluid. I can calculate the area or measure the area of the blades that are spinning. And I can measure the wind speed with the use of, say, a pitot tube. I'll talk about that in a little bit. So this is the derivation. But the short, the short end of it is fluid power is one half mass density times volume flow rate times velocity squared, or one half mass density times the area, times the velocity cubed. In English units, we don't usually talk about the mass density. We talk about the weight density. So we would say 1 half weight density over gravity times the volume flow rate times the velocity squared, or 1 half the weight density of the material over gravity, because uh, mass density is just weight density divided by gravity times the area times the velocity cubed. That's metric. That's English. And these are the big new equations for uh, fluid mechanical power. And if you want to get the fluid mechanical energy, you just multiply the power times the time. So now we should do an example. I'm just going to let you see that. You can